So this is a bell-shaped curve. Now this is associated with the normal distribution. What we should know is that there are many natural phenomena that sort of fit this uh, bell shape uh, and, and the normal distribution. And therefore, the normal distribution can be used to find certain probabilities uh, when we're looking at data that fits the normal distribution. So a couple of things. Um, the normal distribution will be denoted like this. There'll be an n. And then there'll be the mean here. And then we would have what we call variance. Now, the variance is basically the standard deviation squared. Okay, so if, if this notation is given to you, then you will know to find the standard deviation, you will need to square root the variance. Okay, so remember that. Um, other things about the normal distribution, you will uh, have to know that the mean, the median, and the mode are about the same, or they are the same. Okay and that we can work out probabilities because the normal distribution, uh, things that are normally distributed, um, we, can, we can say that there's a certain proportion within one standard deviation, two standard deviations, or three standard deviations. So that's what I'm going to do next. In another video, what we're going to do is we're going to use those things to draw this bell shape, on the, so maybe draw two of these on the same scale. So a couple of things. The mean you will find is in the middle here. Okay, so that's where you're going to find the mean. And then what we do here, this is different from the binomial distribution because binomial distribution actually gave us discrete um, outcomes. So those discrete outcomes we know that we can find probabilities for. But here, because this is going to be a continuous scale, we need to look for a section here. Okay, and we're going to look at the area under, but we're going to know something about that anyway. So what's going to happen is we're, we're going to know that if I was to add a standard deviation and subtract a standard deviation, 68% of the data will fall within that range. Okay? So if I was to go somewhere here and say that this is mean add one standard deviation, and roughly around here, so mean take away one standard deviation, and then this section here would have approximately 68% of all the data. Okay, so 68%. So if that's the case, then we know that in this section here, the, the part that I just marked in red, this will be around 34%. Okay, so that will be around 34%. This will be another 34%. Okay, so around 68% of the data lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so Let's write that down. So if I say mean plus or minus one standard deviation, so 68% of the data will be there. Okay. The other one that we need to know is mean plus or minus two standard deviations. And this would be approximately 95% of the data. Okay, notice I'm saying approximately, but these are the values that we are going to use for this course. And there'll be one more, uh, plus or minus three standard deviations. This would be almost all the data. So we're going to say 99.8%. So you can see that it's going to be extremely unusual to get data outside of three standard deviations from the mean. Okay? Let me draw this one onto the shape as well, bell shape here. So if it's 95%, uh, let's go a little bit further down. So another standard deviation here. So there will be, this will be mean plus two standard deviations. And let's go on the other side as well. Mean subtract two standard deviations. Okay, so that's here. Now, remember, it's 95% all of the way through here. Okay, so that means from this point, to the mean here would be half of that. Okay, so that would be 47.5%. So this, this section here is 47.5%. Okay, and what we're really thinking about is the area, the area here. Okay, so all the way up to the mean. So this area normally gives us the probability in a normal distribution curve. Okay, but for us here, we're going to say 
47.5% of the data lies here had this been a histogram. Okay? So notice that's 47.5. There'll be another 47.5 here. And you can see already that we can do some subtractions to find other sections as well, like for example this section here. So 47.5 take away 34 will give us this section there. Okay, so we can do that as well. And one more, 99.8% of the data, so let's put that on down as well. So this would be right at the end. So mu plus three standard deviations and mean take away three standard deviations. And this will be almost all the data. Okay, so from the mean all the way up to here, we're looking at 49.9% of the data. Okay, so if I just draw an arrow all the way up to there, that would cover approximately 49.9% of the data. Okay, now using these different percentages, you can see how many sections I've got. Okay, so I've got one section there, two, three, four, five, and six. And remember, there's a little bit outside as well, which will be point, uh, 0.2. Okay, so all these sections can be sort of worked out. So I gave you 47.5, and I gave you 34, and I gave you 49.9. But you can see, if I did 49.9 take away 34, I would get all of this section here. So you could be asked to find probabilities for different sections here, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. So here's an example where we can find a probability using um, the normal distribution. Now I took the context out of this writing, but I will explain some context to help you understand. But I also wanted you, I wanted you to see it without much context here as well. So this is the normal distribution with mean 180 and variance 81. Okay, so variance is 81. Therefore, the standard deviation would be the square root of that. So variance is equal to 81, and standard deviation must be, so if I square root both sides, it will be square root of 81, and that will be 9. So what we need to do is, what is the probability of selecting between 198 and 207? So let's say this is the normal distribution for the height of, um, the height of adult males. So let's say 180 is the mean, uh, is the mean 180 centimeters, let's say. And what would the probability be if we had selected someone from here that they would be between 198 and 207 centimeters? Okay, so what we need to do is find out how far away these are from the mean in terms of standard deviation. So let's first take away, so 198 take away 180, that's 18. And then we're going to see how many standard deviations into 18, and that would be 2. Okay. And we're also going to do it for 207. So 207 take away 180. And that is 27. And 27 divided by the number of standard deviations. So how many standard deviations here? It will be 3. Okay. Now, in, in the last uh, few minutes, I, I was explaining how uh, a, a portion of the data will be one standard deviation away or two standard deviations away or three standard deviations away. So let's remind ourselves where they are. So 198 is two standard deviations away. Okay, so let's put that somewhere here. 198. And we said that um, the, approximately 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean when it's normally distributed. And if it's on one side of the mean, it will be half of that. So that will be 47.5%. So this bit here, 47.5%. Uh, okay, so that's the area under the curve here, so around here. And 207 is three standard deviations away. We worked that out here. So let's put that here as well, so 207. And remember, this is three standard deviations away, and we said approximately, uh, or all the, or approximately all the data, so this is about 99.8% of the data lie within three standard deviation, deviations of the mean. And we're only looking at one side, so this is going to be 49.9%. So 49.9%. And this question is asking, what is the probability of selecting between 198 and 207? So it will be this section here, so I'll shade that in. So that is around here. So what would the 
pr proportion be here? It will be 49.9% take away 47.5%. So 49.9 take away 47.5 and that gives us 2.4%. Okay? So the probability of selecting someone between 198 and 207 for this normal distribution would be 2.4%. Now here are some questions for you to do. Um, remember that there is a difference between the variance and the standard deviation and think carefully about which one you're using. And also for this last question you may need to work backwards um, given what I've shown in the video.